In the automotive world, there are street cars and there are race cars. And then there's this, the Acura NSX. A super performing street car developed with a clear intent to go racing. So when it came time to enter the GT3 ranks, transforming the NSX into a pure racer didn't force Acura back to the drawing board. In fact, the NSX GT3 Evo's space frame and engine internals are identical to those of the road-going car, meaning they're also built in the same factories. Better yet, you can also purchase both. So despite its comfy interior and compliant chassis, the Acura NSX shares a lot more with its race-winning counterpart than you might think. Let's see how they stack up. In GT3 racing, our starts are rolling, so launching from a stop isn't exactly a priority. As you can imagine, the NSX's extra torque, nine-speed dual-clutch transmission, all-wheel drive system, and launch control will definitely give it the upper hand in a drag race. So launching the NSX GT3 Evo is quite a bit different than the Acura NSX streetcar. What I have to do, since I have a hand-operated clutch, is grab that clutch, flip it into gear, and then build up the revs all the way to red line. Once I'm on the rev limiter, I dump this clutch and away we go. So launching the NSX road car is definitely a lot easier than launching the NSX GT3 Evo. All I need to do is pop it into track mode, put my left foot on the brake, build up the revs. The NSX I'm driving today is fitted with the optional carbon ceramic brake package, which can much better withstand the intense heat of racing conditions. Unfortunately, due to GT3 rules, the Evo has to make do with conventional iron brake rotors. Then again, the GT3 does receive a little more direct airflow to its brakes through these cooling ducts. We have slightly larger front rotors slightly smaller rear rotors. That size difference really doesn't mean anything. These brakes don't need to last a very long time. Those do. So despite not having the same carbon ceramic brake package that we have in the NSX road car, what we do have in the NSX GT3 Evo is motorsport tuned ABS and it just provides so much stopping power, so much confidence even on these iron rotors. Very much like the road car, we have so much control over the platform, so much control over the balance of the car. But it's really a shame that as per GT3 regulations, we're not allowed to have those carbon ceramic brakes. But even despite that, Acura has done a phenomenal job of creating a really, really confidence-inspiring package. When you put that along with this bespoke suspension system all together, what we have is a package that's unbelievably difficult to beat. So on this particular NSX, we have the optional carbon ceramic brake package, and this thing just stops exceptionally well but where it really comes into its own is the way you can modulate pressure and the way you can manipulate the platform of the car on corner entry it makes anybody look like a superhero it's unbelievable to drive with also what's working underneath us the whole time here is this hybrid electric system and that additional stopping power that additional engine braking that we receive from the hybrid unit just helps so much with that initial deceleration. So much control given to the driver.
driving a race car, especially at race speed, isn't particularly easy. If it was, I'd be out of a job. From the heat, the noise, not being able to use the bathroom, driving a race car is a physical, physical thing. But as far as GT3 cars go, the NSX is an unbelievably forgiving package to drive. I can be so aggressive with this car. I can attack the corner so hard compared to other cars. It's so drivable, just phenomenal. Another huge component of the balance and the drivability of this car is this super handling all-wheel drive system. We have an electric motor in each front wheel that's assisting not just in additional horsepower and torque off the corner, but also so much in terms of the control and the balance. It's just as easy, just as gratifying for me to drive as it is for the everyday driver. All right, so here's the moment that we've all been waiting for. We're gonna compare lap times between the NSX Streetcar and the NSX GT3 Evo around a racetrack. Now, obviously, the NSX GT3 Evo is gonna be a lot faster than any other road car you're ever gonna put around a racetrack. But before we dive into just how much faster it is, we're gonna take a closer look as to what makes this NSX GT3 Evo so fast and so incredibly efficient around the racetrack. The NSX GT3's curb weight checks in more than 950 pounds less than that of the road-going NSX. It's what happens when you toss out comfy power-assisted seats, an audio system, air conditioning, airbags, glass, well, basically the entire interior, as well as a slew of additional regulatory components required by anything eligible to wear a license plate. Though the NSX's suspension componentry is undoubtedly cutting edge, it still needs to be forgiving enough to soak up potholes, speed bumps, ruts, and generally terrible pavement. On the other hand, the NSX GT3 Evo's bespoke suspension systems are designed exclusively for race circuits. So despite being about as wide as a lane of traffic, what really makes this NSX GT3 Evo faster than its road-going counterpart is... Aero. It makes about 500% more downforce than the NSX Streetcar. 500%. So with that expectation in mind, let's see what that translates to in terms of lap times on the stopwatch. we have it nine and a half seconds which frankly comparing a street car to a gt3 car that's not bad at all now of course if you really want to you can strip everything out of that car put in a cage bolt on some aero bits but you're still not going to end up with something nearly as quick as a gt3 car it won't be road legal and you can't take it through the drive through anyway Now that we know about that undeniable DNA link between the GT3 and the NSX streetcar, we're gonna level the playing field the only way that we know how. A Lamar start. 